Hi guys, Zanginator here, and today I'm going to be doing an overview of this, the Sun uh, Oracle Sunfire X4170 Mark II. Uh, main reason I'm going over it is not many people have gone over it. Uh, there's very little information about it, and I have one, so I thought, why not? So yeah, starting with the front, pretty cool. Uh, eight two and a half inch hot swap drives, uh, and waiting on some caddy so I can put my SAS drives in here. <laughs> At the meantime, there's a two and a half inch uh, drive ghetto mounted. <laughs> Like, there's a little zip tie under it to stop it from sagging on the ports at the back. Um, uh, there is a slot loading SATA rewritable DVD drive, uh, two USBs. Uh, over this side, we have our little locator ID. You click it and it starts flashing very rapidly. Um, a warning light that's currently lit up. I'll get, oh, go to that in a second. A power light, the green one. It blinks once every 30 seconds when the system is off, uh, once every second when it's booting, and solidly when it's on, and the little power button underneath it. On this side, there is the drive map, so it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, I totally realized 6, 7. There you go. Um, and there's some more like additional, if we can focus, Additional error diagnosing, hence why I got the error light, because only one of the power supplies is currently plugged in. But if the system's overheating, you get that LED. If the, one of the fans has failed, you get that LED. So yeah, that's the front of the system. Why don't we focus? There we go, phone. So that's the front. Let's go around the back. So around the back of the very messy rack, it's a bit of a flux state at the minute because everything's moving around. So over on this side we've got our two redundant power supplies that have their own indicator LEDs of whether they're okay or failing. As you can see this is the reason the system's complaining is the ones in there but not plugged in. We've got some additional uh, LEDs around the back. This is uh, the locator, just like the front it flashes, a warning light and our okay we're booted. There's a serial management port here, if I can just move that out of the way. Uh, so you can connect over serial instead of using like this standard 9 pin it connects via an RJ45 which is just like the uh, Cisco method of doing it next along is uh, the IPMI server management port so that's uh, just a standard network one on the board then there is four gigabit uh, ports four times gigabit uh, not plugged them up currently because I'm still testing making sure things work and over on this end, we have two USB 2.0s and a whatever you call it for VGA monitor out. Uh, in terms of expansion cards, there is a, I'll get to more detail in a minute, but this is a expansion there, disk controller LSI one and another four port gigabit NIC. And so, right, if I just shut this down and we'll uh, take a look at the gubbins. So back around the front, just need to pull out the KVM tray, whatever you want to call it. I'm already logged in, I've already punched in the command. Uh, this is Proxmox, I like Proxmox. Uh, I'm just testing it on this machine at the minute. So just shut it down and uh, wait, and we'll pull all this stuff out. Woo! This is what I was saying by the LED blink slowly when it's uh, powered off. So this server most probably has the nicest rails I've come across in terms of the stuff I have got these little green clips that you need to squeeze and you can then pull the server out so I'll just quickly do that I'm doing that you can just then pull the whole system out and it has possibly the smoothest rails I've ever come across they're really really nice so on top of the system you have this full system overview and service information it goes from yeah be careful don't pull out too many units at once you might tip your rack Two people might want to lift this, it's pretty heavy. Uh, this one isn't particularly too heavy, but it could, uh, in certain configurations, like the 2U version of this, the 4270, it's pretty heavy. Um, our status indicators, what they mean, so as I was saying, the locate buttons, the faults, everything. Tools you'll require if you're gonna service this. Um, the external layout of the system, saying, hey, look, here's our PCI slot management and all our different connectors. It's very neat, it's very, very detailed, uh, and a brief overview of the internals. And then 
Here's some just service information for quick reference, such as hard drive removal and changing it out and what the LEDs on the hard drives mean. I can't show you that because I don't have the proper caddies. Uh, if you're putting fillers in, if you're changing power supplies, uh, replacing fan modules, removing the server from the rack, blah blah blah, anything really. So yeah, this system also has a split top design whereby you can just open part of the roof. This is designed so you can, oh, excuse me, um, this is me moving, shuffling. So you can replace the fans whilst the system's still running, which is very nice because you don't need to take the top off. So you've got eight uh, 40 millimeter Delta fans. They're pretty cool. They come out pretty easily. Um, like this pogo pin connector, can you see that? Yeah, there you go. Pretty neat. Each of these fans also has their own indicator in case it's failed or if it's working. They all light up green when it's running, which is pretty cool. And you can just shut that, like so. Um, information on the inside of this, watch out, you might catch your fingers in it, and the server might overheat uh, if you keep this open for a long period of times during servicing. Personally, I don't think it would overheat, but you might, if you're running SAS drives in the hot, then in the front, they might overheat, not the rest of the system. So this is more designed for pulling air through. So to open the system from here, you need to press that button down, and it says, oh, caution, the system will shut down. And I'll show you why in a second. I need two hands to open this, so I've got to stop, unfortunately lid off now and the reason the system will shut down is it seems to have this little magnetic latch system to tell if the top panel is on properly um, so on the underside of the lid there is yet another service information tools required uh, if you're installing more RAM how to do it which uh, slots to use first um, PCI card in installations flash modules motherboard everything really anything that you want to do quickly there is a nice reference for you interesting how they say to apply thermal paste to a processor in the star pattern personally i disagree because usually you end up applying way too much in that case but, oh well everyone has their method and they all seem to work so so this is actually the system watch it i'm trying to put this down properly so center we have two lga 1366 processors in this case, uh, they are E5620s, which are quad cores clocked at 2.4 gigahertz uh, with hyperthreading. We'll be swapping those out soon. We have 18 DDR3 uh, DIMM slots, nine per socket. Uh, currently installed in this system, how I got it is actually 56, 56 gigabytes of RAM, uh, all four gig DIMMs uh, registered as well. Surprisingly, without the heat sinks, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's all very, very neat. So we have a power distribution board over here. I'd like to point this out because normally you'd have like some form of cable that hops over from the power distribution or um, like in the case of this Dell, not Dell, what am I saying? HP uh, DL385 G1. Um, there's like actual like almost like 20 pin connectors that come over and the same with the super micro board and it's dual redundant power supplies it has like a 24 pin connector that comes off and has to go to the motherboard whilst this one the power supplies um if i remember off the top of my head they're 80 plus gold uh, and they're capable of kicking out 760 watts each but they only put out a 12 volt and a 3.3 volt no 5 volt strangely so i presume all 5 volt is done on the board uh looking down here instead of wires they have these big connectors you can see one's marked as plus 12 volt and the other's ground and they connect over to the main board over here and again there's like a little rise that goes into the fan board and then on into the front back plane so we have three pci e risers these all half height one's electrically and physically 16 by and the other two are 8x8 on both. Installed in here is um, an LSI, it even says on the back of there, LSI SAS 9211AI. Uh, I haven't flashed this down to IT mode. Strangely, it came with an IR firmware on there. Um, so whoever was using that. And this is an Intel 
Pro, I believe it's a 1000 MT quad port gigabit mix. So whoever was using this was doing some serious database stuff because uh, they had eight gigabit ports to the machine, which is pretty cool. This system um, ha also has a very nice fault remind uh, system whereby typically if there's a fault with one of the components and your IPMI flags it, you've got to remember what it is and you deal with it. Whilst this system actually has a fault remind button on the board and you see if I click it we get a nice uh, green LED It's powered by this capacitor <laughs> which is pretty fun. And yeah, if the, if one of, if the uh, system has marked one of the components has failed, one of these little LEDs somewhere on the board will light up. For instance, there's one for each DIMM, there's uh, one for each processor, and again, more over this side. So yeah, if there's a fault, you'll be able to click on it and it'll go, hey, here's the fault, it's this one. And so you have to remember, which is pretty nice. Uh, there's also a USB on the board, so you know, if you've got your ESXi or other operating systems that can run from USB, you can uh, <laughs> install that there and not risk anyone removing it from the back when they plug in a monitor and keyboard. So yeah, overall, it's a very, very nice system. Uh, well thought out and laid out and uh, designed. The IPMI is a little, eh. It's Java branded because obviously this is designed for use with Oracle database uh, server and I believe Red Hat. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you next time.